Welcome to today's tutorial from the TwinSafe department. Today I will show you how you can update the TwinSafe firmware on your AX8000, X1XX or X2XX with help of our TwinCare 3 safety editor. My name is Martin Fröchtel from the Product Management Safety. As usual, I will give you some basic information and an overview of our demo system before we start with the actual live demonstration. Afterwards, I will tell you what the next tutorials will be and we will have a short Q&A for the firmware update. The goal of our tutorial today is we take an existing AX8000, X1XX or X2XX and we will do an update of the TwinSafe firmware with our new created wizard within the TwinCare 3 safety editor. As prerequisites, uh, as usual, you need a TwinCare 3 version greater or equal to 4024.11. You need a T9000 version greater or equal to 1211. This time you need a TwinSafe firmware uh, less than 03 because of course we want to do an update to 03 and you need an AX8000 firmware greater or equal to 0104 with the default module ID active. The start of the tutorial is an existing IO configuration with an AX8000 X2XX with a firmware version less than 03 in our case it's a firmware 01. Our hardware architecture doesn't matter today because basically we only need a communication channel to the AX8000 over Ethercat. But for the complete information, we have an CX for Ethercat and standard PLC. We have an EL6910, an EL1918 connected to a light barrier. And we have, of course, an AX8000 X2XX, so in the safe motion version. So now it's time already to uh, get on with our live demonstration. As I told you before, we have an existing TwinCat 3 configuration with an AX8000. When we look at the COE object F9C0, we see that currently we have a software version 01 and a bootloader version 09. And then we go over to TwinSafe Wizards Start Firmware Update Wizard to get on with our firmware update. We see our connected drive. We want to update from 01 to 03 because not everybody should do an update. We need an authentication. So we put in our password. And then we can choose where to save our project download history because that download history cannot be restored. So we can save it to the hard disk. Same goes for our log file to be able to look at the log file later. And in the last two steps, we have to confirm that the user is of course aware that the restored safety project has to be tested manually if everything still works. And last but not least, the use of our wizard has to be aware that any external impact may break the firmware update and harm the device. As usual, as in every other component, if you do a firmware update and you power off, for example, during the firmware update, you may impact uh, your device so that it doesn't work anymore. So now we can start the actual update project. For your information, this video uh, is recorded with increased speed. So in real time, it takes more time than shown here. At the beginning, the project history is saved to hard disk and we do a backup of the safety project from the AX8000. The bootloader is updated to the current version. And last but not least, the firmware is updated. And after the update has run successfully, the uh, current safety project is restored to the device. When everything is downloaded, we get a successful report shown here. 
which can also be accessed via the log file, of course. After the download, there's only one step to do. Well, we don't have to do, we want to do it. We want to check via the COE object if the update was successful. So if we look again at F9C0, we see now that we have a software version 03 and the bootloader version 12. So the firmware update was executed successfully. That was basically all from our very quick tutorial to the firmware update. And I hope I could show you how easy it is. In the next tutorial, we have a very exciting topic. I will show you how you can create a safe stop one functionality with an envelope monitoring. So if you activate SS1, the ramp down process is monitored, which basically finishes in the STO state. After that, we change the order of the tutorials. Uh, first, we will do a tutorial on the backup and restore mechanisms with the TwinSafe Motion Wizard. So how to use the backup and restore mechanism on an AX8000. And then afterwards, we will do a tutorial how to create a TwinSafe Motion Wizard project and uh, do some additional local safety functionality. I want to thank you for your attention. I hope I see you back in the next tutorial about SS1 with uh, envelope monitoring.